This video is for those of you who's new into the wholesaling game and you're kind of confused and don't know where to start and actually have to get started wholesaling real estates. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and I'm going to show you that you don't need a license, no buying, no fixing, and you can do this in any city, any state you want. First, I'm going to explain to you what wholesaling is. So all you need to do is find a distressed property with a motivated seller. Distressed property, these are typically property that are run down, which means there's a lot of motivations for the seller needing to sell the property. They can be in pre-foreclosure, they can be behind on their taxes, you know, they can have, you know, uh, liens and other stuff against their property where they need to sell the property quickly, like they need cash quickly. Or maybe it's a hoarder house, so they don't want to put it on the market, they don't want their friends, their family to actually see the condition that they're living in. So there's many different types of motivation why a seller would need to sell their property and they would take a steep discount and just get rid of it. Just like someone will go to the pawn shop and just pawn their stuff because they want cash and they want it now. Once you're able to locate those kind of property and that motivated seller, you negotiate with them and you get the property in a contract at a steep discount. Once you have the property in a contract, this contract gives you equitable interest, which means you, as a potential buyer, you can either move forward to buy the property or you can sell the contract, your rights to buy the property over to someone else for a profit. And that's exactly what we're doing. Once the property's under contract, you're going to market the contract, not the property. You're going to market the contract and you're going to sell it to a cash buyer. Typically, this is the fix and flipper or the ones that want to buy and hold, all right? And you, once you find the cash buyer, you're just going to sign the contract over to them for a profit. So let's just say you got the property in a contract for 100 k You can market it up to 110 up to 120 depending on how much you want to make, okay? And you just assign the contract over to this cash buyer for a profit. No buying, no fixing. And that's how you get paid. So you want to understand the wholesaling formula so you know exactly what to offer to the seller. Okay, so it's ARV, which is after repair value. What does the property worth after it's fixed in perfect condition? Then you minus 30%. 30% is just a rule of thumbs. So what you need to do is you need to understand your market because some market there's a higher demand and some market with lower demand, which means there's not a lot, a whole lot of buyer in that area so sometimes you might even have to get it lower than 30 percent but typically in general if you're able to get under contract at a 30 percent discount minus repair so minus whatever it is that the property uh needs work all right to fix up the property to put in perfect condition so you minus the repair minus whatever it is that you want to make so typically for us in my market we make between twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars on an average assignment fee. So typically, when my VA submit the offer to the seller, they we want our spread to at least have a twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars spread on our assignment fee. Okay, and that would be your offer to the seller. Let's say the property is worth hundred thousand dollars after it's perfectly fixed up. Okay, so you minus thirty percent. That means now it's at seventy thousand. Let's say it needs ten thousand repair. Now puts it at sixty thousand. And let's just say you want to make ten thousand dollars on this wholesale deal, which means you have the max offer to the seller. You would have to be at fifty thousand dollars. Okay. The best place for you to get started is you need to join your local RIA. In every state, every city, there should be a local RIA, R E I A, Real Estate Investor Association. These are where all the investors in the local market comes meet up. And network so you need to start getting your name out there you need to start putting the motion in you need to start building relationships and building connection now let's just say you're a, you want to wholesale completely virtual in a different state you can google them there's Facebook group that you can join and you can start networking from pe with people all online next you need to figure out your target market what market you want to go in typically I recommend that you would start in your own backyard pick a city Pick a county, even pick a zip code, but you just want to start farming, okay? So target market. So you don't want to jump everywhere, okay? When you first start out, you probably want to pick a county. Typically, I would say you want to be between a hundred to 500,000 in population, all right? So that way you can zone in your farm, all right? Because when you're starting out, you probably don't have a big, large budget 
to target everybody in your states. So it's nice to zone in, all right, on your target market. If all the realtor in your local market knows what you do, okay, and how to contact you, there's gonna be more leads for you. You're gonna dominate that market. Next, you need to determine your marketing strategies. Typically, you just wanna pick two that you wanna focus on, okay? So it could be D for D, which is drive for dollars, all right? And listen, you can do this part-time or full-time. So every day you can put out one or two hours or every weekend you can put out four to five hours and you can just drive around your city, around your neighborhood, look for some rundown houses, okay? So D for D is a great way to get started with very little to no capital at all. The next one is SMS. It's basically sending out a bunch of text message, all right, to random strangers let them know that, hey, you're interested in buying property. You're looking to make a cash offer on their property and uh, see if you get any response. The, the one that actually works for us really, really well is cold calling. Basically, just get a list and then you just pound the phone and you just call, okay? Next is sending out postcard or sending out letters. This is called direct mail. Now, typically, this is a little bit more expensive. Postcard is going to cost you about 50 cents per postcard. Letter's gonna run you about a, a, a dollar or so. So typically this require you to have a little bit more of a budget when it comes to marketing. Now I left out one which is bandit sign. Bandit sign works, it's, it's it depending on your city and your states. But bandit sign do work and they're pretty cheap but it takes a lot of manpower for you to go hang up the bandit sign, all right? So in my area, you, ha you can hang it up, you know, Friday nights but you have to take it down at Sunday nights. Some people leave it up and you, and depend on if you get a fine or not, you need to learn how to communicate and negotiate with the seller when you get on the phone. I think a lot of you, this is your probably your biggest weakness is you don't know what to say, you don't know how to handle seller objections, and you just don't know how to negotiate to get them to come off on price, all right? So check out some of my other video on YouTube that I did, just type in cold call role play, there should be a bunch of video where I actually get on the phone with you. I'll teach you how to talk, how to negotiate. All right, so check them out. How good are you at negotiating is going to be determine your success because some of you need to talk to a thousand or five thousand people to get one deal because you're just not good on the phone. Other are so good on the phone that you only need to talk to 100 or 500 people and you're able to get one property on a contract. And depending on how good you are at negotiating, that also determine how big your wholesale fee, your spread would be, is how low can you get the seller to come off on their price. Next, I wanna talk about the importance of networking and using social media. There's Facebook group, there's Instagram, there's YouTube, there's Twitter, there's LinkedIn. There's so many different social media platforms that you can start networking and building up your cash buyers list. Now, your cash buyer list doesn't have to just be you know, people that buy, fix, and flip property, but it could also be other wholesaler, all right? Because they're doing the exact same thing that you're doing. They're out there building their relationship, building up their cash buyer list. So when you get a property in a contract, all you're doing is you leveraging the network, their connections, all right, to get your deal sold. And this is what we call JV deal. So let's say you got a property in a contract, but you're gonna make 20K on it, and you find a partner, right? You bring the deal, they will bring the buyer and typically it's a 50 50 split right you get the deal in the contract they do the other half the work is they get your deal sold for those of you who needs help getting your deal sold i just recently trained up a va all right where she's eight hours that's all she does is helping you helping all my followers finding cash buyer for their deal so you have any deal under contract now it has to be from you I don't want this to be like a daisy chain. I don't want it to be like from another uh, wholesaler and then you trying to JV and then you send it to us. It's just a mess. So you have a deal that you, that you need help finding cash buyer. I don't care what city, what state it's in. Email to that email, all right, with all the informations and we'll help you find the cash buyer for your deal. Now talking about JVing, let's just say that you don't have a prop in a contract. Maybe other wholesaler has a prop in a contract. As you're building up your cash buyers list, you can reach out to them and say, hey, listen, but don't pretend that you're the cash buyer. Just be upfront and tell them, hey, listen, you got if you have any property in a contract, I would love to help you unload it, find a cash buyer for your deal. I have a lot of cash buyer on my list. 
so you can bring a cash buyer to their deal. You had you 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 didn't have to talk to seller. You didn't have to spend any money on marketing to get that deal. All right. So you all you do is you connecting your buyer with their deal and get a 50-50 split. This is another great way to get started in wholesaling without any money at all. So once again, let's just say that you found a wholesaler that they're gonna make twenty thousand dollars on that wholesale deal. You bring a cash buyer to them and you get paid ten G. Boom. They also want to talk about title company title company it's extremely important when it comes to you know getting your deal close because if you deal with the wrong title company they can really screw up your deal because they don't know what they're doing now not every title company knows how to do assignment transaction so when you talk to these title company you don't want to say oh I'm wholesaling this property just say hey I got the property in a contract. We do what's called assignment. Do you guys do that? All right, where we're assigning the contract over to another buyer. So typically, what you want to do is find a good title company that you can work with. Now, in some states like New York or other states, it's attorney only states. So find some attorney that knows how to do these kind of transactions. Okay. And the fastest way to actually find a legit title company or an attorney that knows what they're doing is by leveraging other people, connections, and network. So what you want to do is, once again, your local RIA. Ask people on social media, on Facebook, whatever. Ask them, hey, what title company or attorney that you use that knows how to do assignment transactions? And that's the best way to know that you're working with the right one. It's just by leveraging other people's resource that have already done it. And boom, there you go. So I wholesale completely virtual where I don't meet the seller. I don't see the property. I don't meet up with the cash buyer. I got a team of seven VAs that run my whole entire operations from filtering the leads, right? I call them the lead manager to getting the prop in a contract to selling the deal all done completely virtual. So when it comes to building a team, when you're doing this virtual, it's that you need what I call is foot on ground, all right? Which means you need someone to be able to go out there and facilitate the showing. This is extremely important when you're doing it virtually because you can't go there personally. And even if you are building it in your own market, you want to make sure that your time is not consumed by going out there and showing the property because anybody can do this task. It's actually not that hard. So to build foot on the ground, typically you want to network and build relationship with some realtors in the area. Another one is wholesaler. Or maybe you have a friend or family, all right, in that area that can go out and do this for you. Typically, I pay them between fifty to hundred dollars because it only takes about an hour or so, depending on how far they have to drive to the property, all right. But typically, it's fifty dollars to hundred bucks. Most people don't make fifty to hundred bucks in one hour. You know, some of you are gonna ask me the question is, should we find the seller first or should we find the cash buyer first? The answer is that you can do both because there's no reason why to do one or the other. People said once you find the deal, the cash buy will come. Well, let me tell you this, my friend. Once you find the deal, but nobody knows about your deal and you don't have a cash buyer list built up, guess what? You have to grind and hustle and get this deal sold. When you're able to get more, a lot of eyeballs on your deals, all right, you can get a bidding war, all right. And there are deals where it's not going to work for some investor. But if you build up a, a big enough cash buyer list, it will work for some. There are buyers that are willing to pay you retail value on the property, all right, which means they'll pay you more than what the savvy investors, the seasonal investors, would pay for. Okay, so make sure that you will buy, you build up your cash buyer list as well. You can do both at the same time. Don't don't just wait until you get a property in a contract and then try to find your buyer. You want to do both. So when you do have a property on the contract, boom, you have a buyer in place for your deal. Some of you would be like, well, why don't you find the buyer first and work backward? Okay. So what happened here is, man, if you find the buyers first, okay. But a lot of times some buyer will be like, well, I want to in this area, in this particular area. And then you go and then you do all the farming. And guess what? Your deal, when you get a deal, you you just bring to that one buyer. Now you're depending you're depending on one buyer, all right, in one certain area, all right? So to me, that's just, that just limit your pool of buyers because everything you get, you just go directly to this one buyer. Instead, you just, just focus on finding the deals, building your cash buyer list at the same time, and when you have the deal, you just blast it out to the buyer. 
take it or leave it. You can do both, because at the same time, you can put an ad on Craigslist, all right? It's called a ghost ad where you can attract buyers. You can just start commenting on social media, all right? You can start putting out ads on social media. Say, hey, my partner and I, you know, we're wholesaling this area. We got some property in a contract, you're right, at a steep discount. Want to know who would be interested. And it doesn't take you much time. Right? It only takes about five minutes or so to put a, a post on social media and boom and start building up your cash buyer list like that. At the same time, you pull in the list and you're setting time, right? You block out your time where you're pounding the phone or you're sending out text message or you're driving for dollars to get these deals, their leads coming in. So there's no reason why you, you do one or the other. It's not like get the deal and the buyer will come. You still have to market and work your butt off. Over time, you're starting to build up a more solid cash buyer. So once you get a prop in the contract, boom, it'll get sold like that. But when you first started out, I would say do the bigger your cash buyer list, the better it is. Okay, now let's talk about earnest money deposit. Typically, when we get a prop in a contract, in our contract, I, we, I automatically put $250. When I first started, it was 100 bucks. All right, there's time where I put $10 as an earnest money deposit. Typically, if you don't bring it up, most sellers don't know or don't ask you to put down a deposit amount. Typically, the seller that actually knows what they're like about earnest money deposit is because they have probably already listed property with an agent or they work with an agent or they're an agent themselves. Okay. So they've been through it, so they know to ask. But typically, most sellers that you do directly, they don't really ask. All they want is they just need to know what price are you paying for, you guys agreed on it, and the date at the time of closing. That's pretty much it. Okay, when it comes to the buyer, you want to have the buyer put the most amount down as possible. Because you want to have, you want them to have as much skin in the game as possible. So if they ever backed out, walk away, have cold feet, boom. You get that money and it pays for your time and you can use that money to buy more time with the seller. So when we deal with our, our buyer, we typically want a minimum of $5,000 as a non-refundable. Okay? The most I've ever gotten the buyer to put down is twenty five k and that was on a $700,000 property. But typically, even if you deal with market that's on, a property that's on the market through a, an agent, you know what they require? They require a 1% down to know that you're a serious buyer. So when your buyer question you about, oh, yeah, you know what? Um, they only want to put, there. some of you that I've done an interview where your buyer only put 500. Some of you don't even have your buyer put anything down. When they don't have any skin in the game, guess what, my friend? They can wake up the next day and say, yeah, you know what? I don't want it anymore. Well, guess what happened? Now you're out of pop, you're out of time. And you didn't get paid for all those time that the buyer for wasting all your time. So make sure that you get paid. Okay. So do, don't mess around with this five hundred dollars. Don't mess around with a thousand dollars. All right. When if it's a serious buyer, why would it matter if they put five thousand or twenty five thousand? All right. When they're gonna pay, when they're gonna buy a property that's worth five a hundred to five hundred thousand, and all and this money goes towards. All right goes toward the purchase price. So why would it matter if they are a serious buyer? But don't mess around with some broke ass clown that's trying to pretend like they're Ebola. I wanna talk about closing time. So typically when we get a prop in a contract with the seller, you want to get as much time on that contract as possible. For us, typically I would get at least 45 to 60 days, all right? Sometime even more. Because the more time you have, the more time you're able to find your buyers. And when you put yourself in such a tight time frame, all right, you just get whoever comes first. And that's typically the one that is not paying you the most for your deal. You, plus, you don't want to put yourself in that position, okay? Most seller, to them, a 30 to 45 days closing is fast because they know if they were to list the property on the market, go through inspections with an agent, it's typically a three to four month closing. So if you come in, you're like, hey, we can close in 30 days to 40 days or sooner. All right, to them, that's a fast closing. But I know there were there were, there were time where sellers like, hey, I need this thing to close in 15 to 20 days. Typically, I would say I would be okay with that I either have a buyer in place already for the deal or I'm going to move forward to buy the property myself. But you do not want to put yourself in that position if you don't have to.
Because majority of time, I see some of you, you you so quick to close with the seller, you are the one who's putting yourself in that position. You're telling the seller, hey, we can close in 10 days, we can close in 15 days, because you want to get them to drop off on price and you let them know that you can act quickly, right? But most, once again, unless they ask you, you ask them 30 to 45 days or sooner, would that work for you? And I'm telling you right now, majority of the time, that is a fast closing for a seller. And if they like, oh, I need to be faster, you just tell them, listen, we have done deals where we can close in seven to 15 days, but I rather under promise and over deliver. We just wanna make sure that the title is clear, that all the paperwork done, all the paperwork is done correctly. So later on down the road, we don't have to go back and there's a mess, all right? We just wanna make sure this is a clean transaction. So when you say that, seller also like, oh yes, I want this to be done right. I want it to be done correctly. So I'd rather it to take a little bit more time, okay? When it comes to the cash buyer, you want them to close as quickly as possible, okay? Because until it closes, until you get that money in your hands or that check in your, in your bank, there is no way to tell that that deal will close or not because I have problem where we have a deal that blew up on the day of closing, okay? The day before closing. So I know now nothing is for sure until you get that money or the checks in your hand. So make sure when you get a buyer, you tell them how quickly can you close once title is clear, all right? And if, if he or she is a legit buyer, they would say, well, I can close as quickly as the title is clear. There are buyers that will say, hey, I need at least 15 days because I'm getting a harmony loan. And harmony lender, they need about 15 days or so, all right, to get all the paperwork done. But if any buyer tells you they need a 30 to 45 days closing, typically it's not a legit buyer. It's another wholesaler that's trying to tie you up on a contract and they're trying to sell the deal to a different buyers. There's a really rare occasion that a buyer would need a 30 days closing. Maybe it's because they, they tell you that they would have to sell the other property, all right, so they can get the funds to actually close on this transaction. There are some occasion, really, really rare, all right, but you just need to make sure that your buyer can provide proof. You don't wanna play game, I'm telling you. If they're playing game with you, you're stuck with them, and then you lose out on a potential buyer, and then when they can when they can proceed and get the deal done, you trying to come back to this buyer, but this buyer already bought another property and they're out of cash. You don't want to be in that position, my friend. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video add a lot of value to you. Now, for those of you who needs help built, grow, scale, and automate your wholesaling operations, whether you're new or you're experienced, you try and get to the next level. Go ahead and book a call with my team. Go to King Kong. Dot com book a call with my team let's get on the phone let's see how we can help you out i've been in the game for about 12 years now we wholesale completely virtual i don't meet the seller i don't need to see the property i don't need to deal with the cash buyer i have a team of seven vas that run my entire wholesaling operations from the lead manager to the purchase manager to the transactional coordinator which is the dispositions getting the deal sold all everything like that is done through the phone Okay, so if you want to build something similar so you can travel, Lon and I went to Vietnam for like a month, our, our business still operating, still making money. Because once you have a system and a team in place, it allows you to buy back your time so you get to do what you love and enjoy to do. For me, it's actually creating content like this and helping those of you who are getting into the game or who are trying to scale up your game. Now, I wish you all the best on your journey. Until next time, take care and let's go get this money.